Hello everybody, I'm Rob Bennett. I'm here with the coach Dan O'Hara and this is the Sports Express Network bringing you the greatest from the community sport lifestyle. This week we're going to get you caught up on the first win for the Auburn Pride and then we're going to talk more baseball. We'll be right back. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Do it. Go on and do it. Okay, we are back. Coach, the Auburn Pride got into the win column. What do you have to say about that? First of all, we have way too much fun doing this. <laughs> I got to say that. But no, it was nice, nice to get the W. Uh, you know, we came out. We did some things right. We went back to some basics. Greg Bell had a good game plan. Uh, we actually got the ball into to, to athletes' hands, and, and good things happened. Yeah, Shaq Rouser really seemed to set the tone right from the opening kickoff throughout the rest of the game. You know, did that jumpstart your group, or you think they were just ready to go? We were ready to go. Uh, there was a lot of uh, penned up energy, especially practice Tuesday went well. Uh, Sean Johnson, this is the first time I think we've had the same quarterback two weeks in a row. <laughs> That's usually helpful, right, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> that usually is a huge plus. Uh, but, no, he, he looked pretty good. Uh, he kind of settled down a little bit. I think Kaz had four receptions for 72 yards on the night, uh, some big plays down the field, and, of course, the defense, you know, played the way our defense plays. Uh, we actually had one of the refs. Uh, that was running the clock come down. He says, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Auburn has the best defense I've seen this year. So, you know, that's a big, big boost to hear that from an official who's seen many games. Yeah. Um, but we got the recap from uh, Saturday night. Okay. Well, before we go into that, I was also talking to uh, an official in the booth. Said pretty much the same exact thing. I think the officials have been impressed with the Auburn defense all year. You know, he really was talking about the uh, 21 nothing game against Syracuse. Syracuse has got by far the best offense in the league, putting up the most points. And, uh, you know, you guys holding them 8 nothing at halftime. And well, it was 8, eight, eight nothing score. into the fourth quarter. 8 so. nothing in the final in, quarter. Yeah, in All the right. fourth quarter. So uh, we're looking for that rematch. That's yeah. August 24th. Uh, that's a home game. They're, that place will be packed, I'm sure. Seem to go back to basics on, on offense. Was that part of the plan? We did. Greg and I got together. We sat down. We, we went over some things. And we, we – you know, Greg, Greg had a, a, a good game plan with Sean already. And, you know, we figured if we went back to the basics, that's things that we already know. Let's get good at it. And he, he did a nice job with it. Made some great play calls, as you'll see. Uh, you know, Kaz taking the opening kickoff, 65 yards. Uh, he didn't score. I think he ran out of gas at the 20. <laughs> Kaz, get your cardio up. and uh, Get your you butt know, to practice. Get yep. that cardio built up. We uh, were able to punch it on the opening drive, which felt yeah. really, really good. And, uh, you know, I feel bad because you know how I feel about the Carthage team. Yeah. Yeah, I, f I feel bad to get a win, but I, I, I love Carthage. Uh, Leon does a great job with that program. And, you know, the reason why I love that program is, is the majority of their players are military guys. Wow. You know, and Leon will have, you know, a great team one week. And, oh, guess what? Six yeah. of his guys get deployed. So now he has to scramble, regroup, uh, reorganize, and, it's a tough thing to be in, and you know, Leon being an ex-military and a couple of the coaches being ex-military, nothing but love for them. Yeah. And what we do after the game is we all we all hang out. We go get something to eat. You know, we have a few drinks. We talk a very little football, and then we talk about you know what's in our personal lives. They're just great human beings. Uh, we invited the team out afterwards too. Uh, they came out and nice. and ate with our team. So. I love that relationship, and I think that that's one of the teams in the leagues that, that you can do that with. So Yeah, all you Carthage guys, thank you for everything awesome. that we do. Veterans everywhere, um, just a special, special thing. So good to know that the pride treats them well when, when, when they come into town. We do. We, we respect them. We appreciate uh, everything that they do there, and uh, good guys. They're, you didn't see much trash talk, and you didn't see any cheap shots. I mean... We just play them very, very well, and, and it's it's a great atmosphere, a great game. Yeah, well, let me back you up a little bit. We talked about the offense getting back to basics. Uh, pretty much what does that mean? Well, what that means is what it means to me is get back to what made Henry Bradley the NFA leading rusher. You know, let's get back to what made Kaz one of the top receivers in the league. Let's get back to the routine stuff that – you know, they've done since Pop Warner. Let's get back to the roots. 
the fundamentals, the right routes, the you know the right play calls, the setup play calls. Just get back to the basic fundamentals of of, of an offense, and it, and it worked out. Worked out pretty well. Yeah, I know last year you got great fullback play after week three or week four. I thought Matt Warren did a fantastic job this week. What did you think, Coach? Matt Warren is becoming one of the best fullbacks I've seen in a while. Uh, you know, Anthony Adams, pretty solid. Yep. Leon, pretty solid. Uh, their lives have taken different directions. So to fill that void, Matt Warren came in. And if you watch film... <laughs> <laughs> this boy I did. hits like a truck. Yeah, it sure does. And when he carries the ball, it's the same thing. He'll drag a pile. I think he had uh, probably 13, 14 yards rushing on three carries, but yards after contact were probably all 13 of them because yeah. he just pushes the pile down the field. And uh, he's a very strong, very physical kid. Yeah, he seemed to add another dynamic to that as well when uh, you sneak the ball into him and um, – you know, not just make Henry carry the load all day long. Yeah, and with Matt's size and his, his physical abilities, he can wear down that defensive front. And, and if he gets in the second level, he can wear down some, some linebackers too. So. Absolutely. And talk a little bit more about Kaz, Kaz Rouser, big, big weapon, and uh, finally kind of got on track this week. What, what do you attribute to that? Going back to basics. Okay. That's, I mean, that's all I can say. And Sean... Johnson, you know, evolving into the, the quarterback. We, we knew he could. He said something to me in practice last week. He goes, Coach, you're always on me because I see it in him. I see that yeah. he has the ability. You know, he may not, uh, you know, have the experience behind him, but he, he has the ability. And, you know, we did a couple things with him. Hey, what defense are they in? He kind of, you know, looks at it. He says, okay, single high save, cover three. Yeah, he's yeah. right. Okay. So now he's identifying what he's seeing, and he's able to pick that out, and you'll see – and some of the highlights, he, he made some great plays yeah. and and keep his focus where it needs to be yeah. on, his, on his rollout. Sean hadn't learned yet that if you're on someone, it's because you like them, and when you're not on someone, that means that they're in big trouble. He hasn't picked up that piece of the puzzle yet? Negative. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> well, he will. Maybe he'll pick it up. I like today. him. He's a good kid. A uh, little needy. He's a little needy. But <laughs> I had to say that because if he watches it, he'll know what I mean. But uh, No, I think that uh, he's a kid that... Uh, could be around this league for a yeah. while. Um, um, offensive line, Henry Bradley, boy, they did a nice job this week. The offensive line, hey, Art, big Art Council yes. uh, came back. He play, He's healthy. He played player a game. Player coach, now back to player. Well, yeah, he was in there the first part of the year. A uh, little, little injury set him back. He decided to coach, and then he told me, uh, you know, t- two weeks ago we had the bye week. He told me, I'm coming out of retirement. Boy, he played well. Yeah, he he, he played really well, and uh, I just felt better seeing him with pads on on the sideline too. So I'm sure the rest of the guys might have had that same feeling. Yeah, when you when you look at him and he's you know six foot six, two <laughs> two eighty, he adds a lot. Uh, not too many guys can push him around. Uh, he had a couple pancakes. Yeah, in the film that were pretty impressive. He's got the good leverage and hands are inside, elbows tight. Did a great job. So. Sounds good. And again, defense all season long has been great. Um, Linebackers, just the best in the league. Defensive line played well. They had a big running back, uh, 32-42, something like that. can't remember, but he got nothing like the entire game from what I could tell. Well, Shamar Williams, he leads the NFA in tackles. And, uh, you know, watch the film. He, he, He led the team this week in tackles. I think he had led the team with seven, eight tackles, I think three for a loss. Uh, and it's what he brings in past situations. He's so fast. He's so agile. He gets to the ball very quickly. Uh, Shamar Williams is, in my opinion, one of the best linebackers I've ever coached yeah. uh, as far as knowing what's going on in the field, his vision to see the play, and his speed to react to, to his vision. Charles Gary is another one, just big, strong, physical kid. Uh, has a nose for the football. And then, you know, you got Javon McShane, who, yeah. who does really well. I love Javon. And uh, he's a pretty, pretty physical kid. And then, you know, you, you look at the secondary, and you've got Delquan Ross. You've got Lamont. You've got, uh, you know, who am I forgetting here? Uh, JB. Well, Manny Flowers. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he's a new uh, kid that we got this year. And, He's good. He had a pick this game. Yep. 
JB, of course, brings the lumber. He hit a kid, you know. <laughs> He's got a kid's there, caught feeling some, it there, still today. There's some, there's some hitting that goes on in an Auburn Pride game, and uh, they're just they're just physical. Yeah, you kind of touched up in upon it a little bit, but I wanted to talk about uh, the turnovers and the, and the defense turned the ball over numerous times in this game, number of uh, – interceptions and, and the like, if you want to talk a little bit more about that. Well, we just have guys in the right position. Uh, Sal DeSantis and Scott Wilson do a great job of going over where you're supposed to be in certain situations. You got Lamont uh, F- um, Fleming had a pick. You had yep. Keegan Wilson had a pick. Manny Flowers had a pick. It's anybody at any time can make a play. And uh, in that secondary, they're so fast, they react to the ball. We call them ball hawks. And they just do a great job of, of sniffing the ball out. Yeah. When you go against, you know, physically gifted receivers, those guys that are 6'2", 6'3", Dell can jump out of the gym and, uh, you know. Yeah, I haven't seen a better defensive back than Dell. De- so Dell far. Ross, yeah. in my opinion, he's solid. Yeah. You know, the day that he hangs up his cleats will be a sad day. You know, perhaps take him out, get him some dinner, you Think know, so. feed his family. Yeah, Pray for you because you're going to be so upset about it. Dell will be all right. He's, but he'll he's be more upset. tough kid. All right, Coach, I think we've been talking long enough. Do you have some highlights you want to show us? We do. We'll take a look at this. I mean, this right here is the opening kickoff. And, uh, you know, you couldn't ask any anything more uh, from the opening kickoff. Kaz Rouser picks it up. And when Kaz has the ball, anything can happen. I thought he was dead right there. Yeah, he gets outside, takes, you know, two, three guys to get him down. And great block there by Jaquan Williams. One man to beat. Yeah, and he kind of runs out of gas yeah. right there. Brings it down to the 20 yard line. Same drive, same quarter. Right after this, after what well, we had a penalty, Henry Bradley, of course, takes it right in for the score. Six nothing. We missed the extra point. Uh, Carthage gets the ball back. Hey, Manny Flowers, where are you? You're right there. Great pick. Way to see the ball. Big collision. <laughs> Unfortunately, he wasn't. Guy. Yeah, he wasn't down by contact. He probably could have got up and and ran. Same drive, uh, ensuing drive here. Of course, Greg Tobias, former Syracuse running back from Syracuse University. Great run, gets the outside. Ball's in the wrong hand, will take it. Gets down inside the 10. Here's the scoring play. Sean Johnson feeling it, boom. Pump and go up in the corner. Kaz Rouser gets six, gotta love it. Hey, who called that play? Uh, I don't know, you just, right. dude, you just blew it. <laughs> but anyway, here's Henry Bradley, uh, gone again, 54 yard run. Does what he do, finished on the day with 149. Uh, great showing from him. Hey, Sean to Sultani Campbell. Sean is getting into his groove, feeling it. Sultani's another one of them kids that can do anything with the football. See the flag come in, it got taken back, but still a great play. Now, uh, coming back to Henry Bradley, 15 yard run for a TD, makes it 19 to nothing. Uh, we missed the f- two extra points, got blocked, so hey, let's go for two points. We got the big powerhouse, Henry Bradley, left side scores. This next play, Matt King, this man is 50 years old, and he just breaks through up the middle, sees it, reads it, takes the guy down. Got the most respect for Matt King, 50 years old, still playing the game. I got to show this one. This is Keegan Wilson uh, getting a pick. If I don't show it, it'll let me hear all about it the rest of the week. But pick, kind of a weak run back. Up, no vertical, gets tackled, love him. This is the greatest play of the game. This was late in 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 the game. But ball gets popped up. Trey Backus, number one, just plucks Trey. it. Does a good spin move. Gets in for the final score. Final final from Auburn, 27, Carthage, 6. All right, so when we do these in the future, I won't interrupt your flow, all right? I was in a flow. You I was doing flow. the Chris Berman thing, and he <laughs> blew it. But that's okay. We got it back. Hey, Bradley ended up 11 for 149. Tobias, 5 for 58 on rushing. Uh, Sean was 6 for 12, 100 yards. Kaz, four receptions, 72 yards. Our defense, which is always solid, ended up with seven sacks. Shamar led in tackles. We had three interceptions. So a good showing by Auburn. Things are, are starting to click. And off to Troy this Saturday. Was that the first score by the defense this season? As great I believe as it was. Played, I think so, yep, too. I believe it All was. Right. And Trey just made a ridiculous <laughs> play. Uh, he just plucked He's, it one hand out of the, out of the air. And, Trey's and, and a pretty special athlete. He, he is. He's another... You know, we've got so many athletes on this team. And uh, one of our players, and I've said it 100 times in practice, is we got a lot of athletes. We just don't have football players. Yeah, so well. going back to the basics and, and doing what we did paid dividends. So I have one question for you, and obviously a fantastic game by the Pride on offense and defense. Everything was, was clicking. 
and you know I don't want to make this a negative point. I was just a little surprised on the last drive of the game, 27 to six inside two minutes. Still surprised to see um, Henry Bradley, basically the focal point of the offense, still in the game and you know still trying to get up one more score. Um, what was going on with that? I walked out to that huddle and I told them to take a knee. And somehow somebody took it upon themselves to say we're going to score again. So I let them have it at the end of the game, and yeah. that's not going to happen again. All right. And if it does, they can play for another team. It's right. pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, I thought it was odd from a sportsmanship perspective, but most importantly, you can't have Henry Bradley out there getting hurt on some freak play at the end of the game and a win. Well, that's the thing. I've, I've done this long enough where – you know, I was with Scott Wilson where that actually happened. Hey, one more play, one more play. No, no, we run that one more play. Kid gets hurt, and that's it for the season. And, no, uh, I, I know this, this league, the NFA, is based off of points. You know, the more points you score, the higher in the rankings you get. I'm not that yeah, guy. Yeah. I mean, that game, 27-6, to six, I, I, we're good. We'll we're good. It. We got the ball. We can run the clock out. You know, they don't have any more timeouts. Take a knee. Let's end this. Let's go in with the win. But gotcha. uh, All right. yeah, I wasn't real, uh, All right. real Learning happy. experience? <laughs> not, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully a learning experience for those guys. Yeah, but. when they get done with their yeah. 27th lap around the football field, we'll see, we'll see how they feel about taking a knee next time. All so. right. Well, what's coming up next week? Troy. Troy. Got a three-hour, ten-minute bus trip to Troy. Um, Big D's limo is going to pick us up and uh, take us there. And uh, I think... I feel good. I, yeah. I, I feel good where we are. Um, I feel good how far we've came, and uh, I think it'll be a great game. Yeah. I think it's uh, week one or week two gave them everything they wanted. Uh, the <clears throat> defense played phenomenal. Offense just couldn't get it going. Lost a close one. So uh, twelve to thirteen. Yeah, yeah. All right, rematch so, time. Yep, Fighting Irish this Saturday in Troy, and then uh, we're back home. Big game against Lockport. Got to have them all. Got to have them all, all from, from here on out. Okay. And then we end the season at home against Syracuse. Nice. And that's... Uh, that'll be tough. That'll be a, that'll be a big game. Yep. That, the stands will be full for that one. So, All right, Coach. Well, good luck, and we look forward to hearing about the Prides game against the Troy Fighting Irish next week. I hope I'm smiling next week. <laughs> I hope you are, too. Okay, Coach, I've got my weekly question for you. <laughs> I see that under the New York State rules and regulations, transfers, transfer students for New York high school athletes still have to sit out a year if their address hasn't changed, but now two things are different. Number one, the kids can practice with their new teams, and number two, the modified level and down, there's no need to sit out a year. What do you think about that? So break this down for me. Yes. I'm a... Junior in high school, I'm in Auburn. I move to Weedsport. Okay. So I have to sit out a year? I don't think in that situation you do. It's for the kid that still lives in Auburn but ends up going to another school for whatever reason. Is that a private school? Could be. So if I'm in Auburn, my parents want to send me to CBA. Yep. I got to sit out a year? You do. Let the kid play, man. Yeah. Let them play. It's high school. Limited time, right? Yeah. Let them play. I mean, they change NCAA rules just for that, you know, guy that transfers and stuff like that. Let the kid play. I mean, listen, if they're talking about recruiting players, stuff like that, I hate to break it to you. It doesn't. It, it, just let the kid play. Uh, that's, that's, that's it's high it. school. Yeah, it's high school. It's high school. All right. So he, he loses that year eligibility. It's not like he can get it back. Nope. It's yeah. not like you stay in a fifth year of high school. <clears throat> yeah, let the kid play. All right. You heard it here. That was easy. Yeah. That was an easy I'll one. I'll have a better one for you next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, that's all we've got for this week. I'm Rob Bennett. He's Coach Dan O'Hara. This is the Sports Express Network bringing you the best of the community sport lifestyle. Hey, Coach, if people want to get their sport covered, what do they need to do? Call us. Let us Call know. Call us. Call us. us know. Email us. Let us know. Sports Express Network, let us cover your stuff. Who wouldn't Thank want you. us there? Just saying. Nobody. There you go. Thanks. <laughs>